Hello and good morning. Thank you for joining us here for our daily devotional. My name is Rob Thompson and I have been attending Mount Gilead Church uh, since about 2010. And I am now actually on staff as discipleship minister. So I work uh, with, in the adult ministries uh, with Kent Phillips and Jen Reed, among others. And so I am just uh, consider this a privilege to be able to share with you uh, in this devotional time. So thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in and joining. And uh, today, what I'd like to share is just some scripture that uh, is just very personal to me. And uh, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful scripture, um, as all scripture is. And, uh, but I'd like to just share this with you, and, and, and hopefully it'll speak to you. Um, as it does to me. So uh, I'll be looking, or we will be looking at the book of John and John chapter 14. And I like to, uh, my translation preference is NIV. And so I just, I, uh, I love the book of John. And so we're going to look at John chapter 14, beginning in verse 1. So if you have your Bibles or your tablet or, or uh, your phone, whatever it is that you're using, you can open that to. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 1. Now, these are Jesus' words, so you may see it in red print if you have a, a red print format. So, Jesus uh, says in verse 1, Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. At that point, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. That just speaks volumes to me. And what I'd like to just share from my heart uh, to yours is uh, four things. Uh, number one, the way that this verse starts when Jesus says, trust in God, trust also in me. So let's look at the context and who Jesus is actually talking to here. Of course, he's talking to, to all of us through his word, but in this, uh, in this instance, he's talking, we know definitely, to Thomas. And also in the chapter uh, 14, we know he's talking because Philip is there. And then also Judas. Not Judas Iscariot, the, the, the traitor, but another Judas. Because those three names are mentioned. So Jesus is talking uh, to this group of men who have uh, been raised uh, Jewish and under the law of Moses. And they know just from life and from what they've been taught from scriptures to trust God. Uh, they've been raised under the law of Moses, and so they, they trust God. They know that God has brought the Israelites out of uh, Egypt into the Promised Land, so they trust God. Well, Jesus is saying in this text, trust God, trust me also. And then number two, there's a promise. Jesus said, in my house are many, in my Father's house are many rooms. So he's, he's making a promise here that he's going away. In fact, Jesus is away now, preparing a place for us. And that's just a beautiful promise. I, I love that. Number three is Jesus says, if you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. And uh, this is powerful. Right before that, right before that, Jesus makes the declaration that I think is one of the most com compelling and powerful in scripture, where Jesus plainly states, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then, if you really knew me, you'd know my Father as well. Now, John is writing this, and in my estimation, I think a lot of you might agree that John, I'm sure, really knew Jesus. Uh, John, I, I love John's personality. John, in, in more, more than one occasion, John refers to himself as the disciple Jesus loved. 
And I just like that bit of personality with John. So think about also when Jesus was on the cross. He looked down from the cross at one point and basically said, John, this is your mother, speaking of Jesus' mother Mary. And mother Mary, this is your son John. Uh, to me, that's saying that John is going to take care of Jesus' mother moving forward. And then we know that John was the revelator. John was selected to write the book of Revelation. So there was an intimacy there that John had with Jesus. And my challenge for all of us today is the last point of, do we really know Jesus? And so we know that the best way to develop that intimate relationship with Jesus is through reading in the word and in our prayer life. So there is a concept in interpersonal communication and in psychology that's called presence. And presence is just being focused and locked in. So let's take an example of when you come home at the end of the day and you're talking to your spouse and your spouse is, is sharing about his or her day with you. And you might be scrolling through your phone or looking at your spouse, but in the back of your mind, you have a whole list of things that are going through your mind that you still have to do before the end of the day. So are you really present with your spouse at that point in time? Are you focused on what your spouse is saying? So presence is being tuned in and focused. So technology is great. Technology is fantastic. In fact, technology is the reason that we're able to share this devotional with you this morning, the way we've been striving, uh, streaming our live services. So, but there's a time when you put technology aside. Go into a prayer room or an office or a separate space. Clear the clutter. Make it just you and the Word, you and Scripture, and you having communion with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's, that's my challenge for all of us. Let's get to really know Jesus and clear the clutter and spend that intimate time talking to and listening to our Lord and Savior. So I want to leave you with this. Uh, this week, or today perhaps, go ahead and read all of chapter 14 in John. It's just, just fantastic. Um, piece of literature and word, the word, the truth, and uh, so finish reading that and just uh, and just see the the intimacy there in the language. So I'd like to go ahead and close now with just a, a word of prayer for all of us. So if you will bow with me, gracious Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, for the sunshine that we see. We thank you, Father, for technology and. The fact that we're able to share with folks just all over our state, our country, possibly even overseas with these devotionals, for the technology that we have to stream our live services. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gift of salvation through Jesus and for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for our church family, and maybe for some that are new, that are tuning in and listening, that they will sense the love that we have for people, for our community, and that love is found upon Jesus. So Father, we commit this day to you. We pray your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray that your will be done in our lives, and we will continue, Father, always, even in these challenging times, to give you the praise, the honor, and glory. For we know, Father, that you are in charge, and we know that you are on the throne, and today we claim victory in Jesus. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow.